Hey, what's up, everybody? Doran Aldana here coming at you with another kick-ass episode of the Art of Mortgage Marketing Podcast. Coming at you with the one and only Chris Real, the real deal, Facebook ads expert extraordinaire. And uh, we're going to be talking today about how to stop chasing realtors, how to stop kissing ass and chasing realtors and have them start to chase you, have them starting to beg, bribe and chase to have the privilege to work with you. How's that for flipping the script? So if that sounds uh, too good to be true, I can tell you right now, you've been doing it the hard way. And uh, it is indeed too good to be true if you do it the hard way. But if you do it the way we're going to be talking about today, it's going to change the game entirely. So uh, what's up, Chris? How's it going, brother? Thanks for hanging what's with up, me today. Yeah, no problem. Glad to, glad to be here. Absolutely. So those uh, of you who are uninitiated, who don't know who Chris Real is, He's been in the game for 20 years as a loan officer on the front lines of capitalism in the real world, crushing it. And um, he actually learned how to do Facebook ads to generate leads just by virtue of his own uh, astute clarity in noticing that chasing realtors just doesn't freaking work. You know, chasing them down, offering rate sheets and donuts. Maybe that worked 20 years ago. It doesn't mm -hmm. work nowadays. And cold calling and all that BS that's doing it the hard way. And he's an intelligent guy, so it didn't take him long to realize there's got to be a better way. There's got to be a way to add more value. There's got to be a way to have the realtor chomping at the bit to work with him as opposed to him groveling and chasing and bribing and all that ass kissing that just has you feeling like you're losing your soul and your dignity every time you pick up the phone to do it. So he started to just innovate and iterate uh, ways to generate online using social media, using Facebook several years ago now. And uh, just by virtue of trial and error and trying different things and investing himself with courses and, and different uh, ads programs, he really cracked the code and, uh, and figured out the secret sauce to generating quality leads online that he can serve up to top producing agents who qualify with a silver spoon from a silver platter and be able to flip the script so that the realtors need him more than he needs the realtor. And so what we're going to talk about today is how to shift your mindset and what's wrong with the typical conventional mindset nowadays with loan officers that has them inflicting themselves with unnecessary struggle and trouble and stress and strife and how to shift the game so that you can really call your own shots, create your own destiny, kick ass, take names, chew bubble gum, crush it on your terms, not the other way around. So uh, that being said, why don't we kick things off, Chris, with just talking about what's flawed with today's conventional thinking in the mortgage world around realtors? Because we all know it's still kind of a refi boom, so to speak, but we know that that's going to end. It's not a matter of if, just when. Everyone's going to be crawling out from underneath their refi rocks and clamoring after the same purchase business and the same real estate agents. And Lord knows, just being a you know real, just being a loan officer with a pulse, you can fog a mirror, uh, offering great rates and great service, ain't going to cut it. That ain't going to yeah. get the partnerships. It's, chances are not even going to get the meetings, let alone <laughs> the partnerships. So let's talk about typical uh, flawed thinking and the erroneous beliefs that uh, most loan officers approach their business with that has them chasing realtors unnecessarily and wasting a lot of time, energy and money on shit that doesn't work. Why don't we start there? Yeah, I mean, I, th I think, you know, you know, back in, um, geez, I, I don't know, when I, when I entered, I think it was like 2000 um, or so. And uh, back in that time frame, we had, um, you know, the, the, the majority of folks that were, um, you know, the, or the majority of realtors that we would go after, we would do it in a, you know, uh, knock on the door, handing rate sheets, um, you know, coffee, donuts, getting to know them a little bit, which is not a bad thing, by the way. Like, you know, getting to know them and, and, and having a, um, you know, having a... Uh, having a conversation, you know, that's all, that's all well and good. The problem is, is that we used to call it the Remax handshake. I swear to God, that's what it used to be called. The Remax handshake was like, give me some money. Like you want to do business with us, give us some money. And unfortunately, fast forward to, you know, 18 years later, 19 years later, it's the same shit, frankly, right? It's the same nonsense that goes on. And really, really what they're trying to do 
is and and I get it, like it's always a it's always a, a one way street per se like you know historically it's been a one way street in other words the loan officer is asking the realtor for business and it's very hard to reciprocate from you know uh, from the realtor uh, you know to the realtor to get them business and help them grow their business and if you ask the realtor what they want, you know, what's their hardest and, and, and their biggest challenge? Well, it's getting business. That's their biggest challenge. The biggest challenge in any business, it doesn't matter what business it is, it doesn't matter whether it's a, you know, real estate, mortgage, uh, you know, restaurant, it doesn't matter. You're going to get people in the door. So th their hardest challenge and their biggest challenge is getting, is getting business. So when we're going in as a, as a loan officer, here's the old way of thinking. Well, listen, um, Mr. Realtor, I can close on time. I, and, and I swear, it's the same pictures go on today. I can close on time, mm -hmm. a quick turnaround. When I pre-approve somebody, they'll close. Um, we have great rates. We're going to have great service. We're going to communicate all the time. Like, those are the normal things. And, and any any loan officer that's, that's viewing this, they're going to relate because they've said it at some point. I've said it. Right. Mm -hmm. And so those are the things that people are pitching. OK, we have good program. And people, some people have decent programs like, you know, niche programs, et cetera. Some of them do. But here's the thing. I don't know when the bar was set so low that <laughs> yeah, really, I don't know when the bar was set so low that you that you shouldn't have great rates and you shouldn't have a <laughs> service and you should be good on time. You know what yeah. I mean? And all of a sudden now that's the unique differentiator, right? All yeah. of a sudden that's setting you apart is, you know, you got great rates, great service, and you got, you know, closings on time. Yeah. You know, yeah. now, you're, now you're unique all of a sudden. Yeah, that's part of being a professional, right? You're supposed right. to do that stuff, you know? But in addition to like, so, okay, so we can do all that good stuff and people are pitching the same thing. Well, the old mindset is, is well, that's good enough. I, I'll close on time. Give me your business. It's going to close. No, well, the, at the end of the day, that's all good, and you should be doing that. That that's the old mindset. That that's good enough. No, you need to step, take one step further. And how am I going to help my my real estate agent succeed? And truth be told, if you ask them, like we we have people, you know, you have a questioning process that the coaching clients go through, right? And so. One of the questions is, uh, you know, and there's many, but one of the questions is, what's your biggest challenge? And, and that challenge is going to be 95% of the time, I need to get more business. And most of the time, it's, I, I want more listings. That's, you know, real estate agents, I want more listings. Especially because, in the seller's market. Yeah, it's in the seller's market. So now, more than ever, I want more listings. But at the end of the day, it's, I want more clients. I want more commission, right? And so in order to, to, to help that agent, you know, succeed, you need to add value in, in how are you going to do it by getting them more clients, right? And that's always been the rub in, in the real estate, uh, the, the real estate loan officer um, relationship is loan officers take, 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 they don't give, 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 right? So a real estate agent will be like, hey, listen, I want to, you know, I'll do business with you, but I need some business in return. I don't want to, you know, send you 10 clients and I don't get any in return. Well, the problem is, is that me, you know, myself as, a, as an originator, I've got 10 agents I'm working with. All my referrals, the majority of my referrals come from other agents. So I can't bring, you know, Sally Smith that came from, you know, Mike Smith, the real estate agent. I can't refer that over, that over to, to, you know, Brenda, who's, who's another one of my real estate agents. It, it doesn't work. So, right. so, and that, and so there's two ways we can help them grow their business. Right, the Remax handshake. Give me five hundred bucks a month for Zillow ad spend. Right, so we, can get a spend. so we can get a bunch of shit leads and step over dollars to pick up dimes and sift through a mountain of gravel to find the measly gold nugget, one out of every hundred or two hundred or three hundred. Right. Yep, yep. yep. So it, it's that um, where we completely lose control. We give five hundred bucks. We have no idea whether or not they're following up with the leads. We have no idea. You know, we're not setting them up for success, etc. So that's an option, right? And then we have, or we have the ability to, um, you know, give them now more than ever. We didn't used to have this ability, 
Uh, but now we have the ability to lead gen for them, right? Because it all starts with conversations. If you can, if you can sit by, if you can sit back and take a look at where the, the whole process starts, as far as the sales concerned, it's at the conversation level. So if somehow, some way we can we can increase their conversation level, right? If we can increase the amount of conversations they have with people that either want to buy now or buy later or sell their house now or sell it later, then we've helped them grow their business if they're worth their salt and sales. So what we need to do is you, you have two options. You can give them money, you know, that's the, the you know, that that's the kind of. To be the ATM. <laughs> yeah, yeah, open frame method, or you can control the process, right? Feed them leads, okay? And see whether or not they're actually following up. Help them put a system in place to follow up, right? Help them convert their leads, right? So we, and, and make sure of their success, right? So I opted after spending, after thousands and thousands of thousands of dollars, either my LOs, we were splitting the comp splitting the con contribution, myself, we were, uh, you know, as far as contribution to Zillow ad spend, realtor.com ad spend, you know, way back when it was a real estate book. It was an actual periodical, you know, that with, with all the new listings that come out, you, you know, it was three or 400 bucks a month for each agent to be able to advertise in the real estate book. So it went from the real estate book. Oh, now there's, um, you know, real uh, Zillow. We wanted to contrib contribute to Zillow. It's awesome. And then Realtor.com and then Boomtown. And then it goes on and on and on. And right. at the end of the day, you have nothing to show for it because the leads weren't coming to you, number one. And number two, you are relying on them to convert. And frankly, the majority of real estate agents aren't, so. good, at, aren't, aren't <laughs> good at converting. And, and it's, it all comes down to follow up. And, and it's not just real estate agents, it's loan officers too, myself right. included, until I figured out a system, right? right? So that drove me to say, there's got to be a better way. And in turn, now we just flip the script. We don't need. Our, and, and the real in the loan officers that we coach, right? They like we don't need. They don't. They're not wanting for realtor relationships. No, they're not wanting for realtor relationships. Their mindset has shifted because they have something that the realtor wants now, and that's in the form of a value added relationship to help them grow their business. And if, if and it's it is a mindset shift, especially for the older loan officers, you know, that have been around for a long time, um, mm -hmm. but. If you make that shift to like, listen, you're not a commodity, you're helping them grow their business. If you can make that shift, then you're gonna, you know, you're gonna succeed. And, um, and, and that's what it's all about. You can either contribute, right? Monetarily, you're buying the relationship or you can go another route and help them grow their business. And, and when you say when you say buying relationship, what you're buying is you being a replaceable commodity in that relationship. Because the moment someone else comes around and offers fifteen hundred bucks a month instead of a G note per month for Zillow ads or Realtor.com ads or Boomtown ads or whatever crap ads they are or whatever lead programs they are, you end up being a replaceable commodity because all you're providing is money that's easily replaceable. So the point, the point you made earlier about having control over it isn't just more control in the sense of you're actually uh, more in the mix of being part of communicating with these leads and turning these leads into apps and closings, which is important. But also when you say control, what you're really saying is you're becoming more and more of an irreplaceable asset on their team because once you become the lead generator, the lead converter, the unique value adder beyond just being an ATM, poning up your 500 or 700 or 1,000 or more per month in a replaceable spend. Now, all of a sudden, if they decide they don't want to work with you and you are inextricably enmeshed with everything they're doing with their lead gen and their lead conversion, 
and they're making dozens of thousands of dollars or hundreds of thousands of dollars through what they're doing through you, there's a significant pain of disconnect there. A whole lot more pain of disconnect than, oh, you don't want to work with me? Okay, I'm going to get another loan officer to pay that thousand dollars a month. I mean, that's easy to replace, right? Yeah, for sure. Um, so there's that piece. And then there's the, okay, we've got unique value, Dorn. I don't know why it still feels like we're chasing because we, you know, we're trying, we're, we're calling the 70, we're calling the 40 uh, realtors every Monday, like our quote unquote coaches have told us. And, you know, these realtors are getting tired of me calling every freaking Monday without having a meaningful reason to, to have a conversation. Uh, well, go for I mean, if you don't have a unique value, why do they want to hear from you every freaking Monday? You know, it's like take a mallet and whack them over the head with it every Monday. That's basically what we, what you're doing. It's redundancy, right? So then you're making outbound overtures, but what really are you bringing to the table? Or maybe you're doing one of these programs where you, you know, you're learning to do the, the lead gen, being the chief cook and bottle washer, wearing all the hats but you're kind of sitting on a one-legged stool. Like, you know, you're bringing a bunch of leads, but you don't really, you know, let's be real. Realtors don't want leads. They want deals. They want closings. They want cash in their wallet. So some people might be on this, watching this. And they're like, Doran, I've already tried this. Or Chris, I've already tried, you know, trying to generate leads on social media. And these realtors are like, don't give me Facebook leads. You kidding me? Those things are crap because they had a negative experience in the past. And so now they have a negative association. And so what we're talking about here, guys, is not being a one-legged stool, not feeding your realtors with a, you know, a mountain of shit leads that don't convert, that just gives them more work to do, more chaff to, to weed through, not just being their ATM where you're paying for their Zillow. What we're talking about here is actually being a strategic profit producing partner for these people where you're actually making their cash register ring. Not just a bunch of crap leads, but actually making their cash register ring. So let's talk about how we need to be structuring this unique value uh, beyond just generating leads. Because you, know, you and I know, Chris, that just going out there and winging it with Facebook leads or even having a program and getting leads on Facebook isn't necessarily enough to attract top producing realtors to make you their exclusive. There's a whole lot more juice we got to squeeze from the fruit than just generating a bunch of leads. So let's talk for a moment about how we need to be able to structure this unique value so it's a whole lot more robust than just riding a, a one trick pony and sitting on a one legged stool with like one anemic little bit of unique value. Talk, talk to me about that for a moment. Yeah, I mean, I think the biggest thing when when we're sitting down with a with an agent is really you know getting to know them a little bit, right? So yeah. um, <clears throat> there's always a way to get in, right? Our unique value prop, like our our way to get in, so that we can sit down and really uncover a pain, is um, is we can help you grow your business. I mean, that's really what we can do right. because there's so many different tools that we can do that with. So, but when we sit down and we 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 take a look like at, at a general overview of their business, then we're looking to find a pain point. And that pain point could be like, let's, let's face it. That pain point can be, um, I just, you know, I, I've got so I got 300 people in my database. I just don't, I've never, I've never uh, really reached out to them. Um, I'm going to, you know, I'm spending a ton of money on, on leads. I keep filling the pipeline. But I'm not, you know, I don't have a database. I don't even have a database set up. Never mind. I'm marketing yeah. that database, right? Still, so still doing caveman marketing, marketing with Excel and Outlook, right? Yeah, right, right. So it's not just lead. My point is, this is not just leads, but we, you take a holistic approach and ask them questions, find out, you know, what they're doing for their marketing and where there's a need so you can make it an immediate impact, right? So, mm -hmm. um, so the point is we're doing a, a more of a holistic approach. If we don't have enough conversations in place, well then guess what? We need to put some lead gen in place. If we've got a lot of conversations in place, but we're not converting, well we need to take a look at that lead gen, where it's coming from and what you're doing for follow-up. And then we'll take a look at that and help you coach through conversion. Then 
oh, we, you know, we're doing really well with our lead gen. We're closing deals. Um, we got this huge database that we're amassing, um, but we're not, um, we're not reaching out and, and retaining our customers. We, um, you know, 10% of our business is coming from our past customers. Like I've se- I see that, right? And, and really, you know, or less. 50 or, yeah, 50 or 60% should be coming from your past customers if you're a seasoned veteran. Um, yeah. And so that, you know, there, there's all different pillars, right? You're, you, there's, only, there's only a few ways we get business, right? There's our, there, there's, um, our past clients and referrals, right, from past clients. Then there's our professional partners, right? So if we're a realtor, um, there are attorneys, our builders, et cetera, okay? So, and then there's advertising and leads, right? So consumer direct, as I like to call it. Yeah, consumer direct. So there's only three. And so, but most agents know, not even, they don't even know that there's three, number one. Um, They don't don't know how to segment. Uh, But number two, they have holes in all three of those pillars. and, And sometimes they're not even existing. You know, like one of the pillars isn't even existing. So, at, you know, as we coach, we find out which pillars need to be repositioned and really hone in on those pillars, uh, which ones just need a little bit more strengthening, which ones are strong, uh, which ones are not existent. And then we'll focus on either of those three and really take a holistic approach. That's, you know, that's where you're bringing value. I think that's really huge, Chris, because you, I'm sure uh, you more than even me are sick and tired of these loan officers <laughs> who, you know, they're well intending and they're well meaning and they, you know, they're obviously drew, doing the best with what they know, but they'll invest in a program like ours and they think the secret sauce is the leads, you know, so they're doing Facebook yeah. ads and they're generating leads and, a certain percentage are turning into apps and a certain percentage of those are turning into closings, but they're myopically focusing on, Oh man, I've only got three apps or I've only got five apps or I've only got one deal. And so all they're focusing on is the lack limitation and scarcity of I've only got three pre-approvals out of all these leads. And they think that the only way to attract top producing realtors and keep top producing, top producing realtors to make them their exclusive lending partner is all myopically focused on the conversion of these Facebook leads. <laughs> and, you know, obviously if all we're relying on is that, we're freaking screwed before we even start. Because let's be real, Facebook leads, number one, take time to cultivate, to germinate, to incubate. Number two, you're gonna get a fair amount of chaff before you're gonna actually gonna get a seed that takes root and bears fruit in the form of an app and a closing. Number three, Like we talked about before, realtors couldn't give a rat's ass about leads if they're not quality. If they're smart, they're going to be like, you know, spare me the grief. (laughs) I've been there, done that. I don't want a bunch of chaff. And if all you're doing, and this is a problem with a lot of programs out there, is they teach the loan officer how to just myopically focus to do one thing. And they're promising an avalanche of awesome where the, the loan officer is going to double, triple, quadruple, quintuple their income just by this one strategy, generating leads and doing nothing else. The problem with that is it doesn't work. We need to have a more robust uh, arsenal. We need to have a full quiver of unique value and we can't be relying on a one trick pony because Lord knows something could happen to Facebook tomorrow. We don't know, nobody knows. Anyone who tells you that we know for certain that Facebook's gonna work forever is freaking lying to you. No one knows. So if we're building our livelihood and our destiny and our ability to provide for our family on a one-legged stool, relying on a one-trick pony, we're in for freaking peril, disaster, and disappointment because the front lines of capitalism ain't not nice. Storms hit at any given day. So I think it's huge that you're emphasizing the importance of having building stability through diversification and being a a real partner to those realtors, not just being a one trick pony with a bunch of chaff leads that maybe one or two or three or 4% might convert. They don't, they don't want chaff. They want 
cash in their wallet. That's what people want. And there's so many ways to do that. They could have hundreds, maybe even thousands of dead leads just sitting there in their database. What if you were to show them how to resurrect those dead leads into hot for what you got leads? We have campaigns that are battle tested and proven to do that. What if you could show them how to set up that CRM like you're talking about, Chris, and actually automate their follow-up so they can convert more of their past clients into repeat and referral business and prospects into actual closings? What if you could show them how to win more listing presentations, how to get more listings? Like these are things that they're already spending time and money on already. Why not show them how to get more meat off the bone? So we've talked about diversification and the importance thereof. We've talked about not being the one trick pony. Let's talk now about follow up because, you know, let's be real. You can get a shit ton of leads on Facebook and convert Jack diddly squat. Let's talk about what people need to know, know, not on a granular sense, but more on a global level about how to convert efficiently, how to work smart instead of just working hard when it comes to follow up. And then also how to teach your, your realtors how to do likewise, because that's a key piece where people are leaving a lot of money on the table. Yeah. So I, I'll give you, I'm going to give you some uh, real life examples of this stuff. So sure. on, on, on a higher level, um, as far as follow up, like for cold lead gen is concerned, you, you need to be reaching out to these folks at least nine times. Okay. When, mm. when, um, and this is why most of us fail because we, we don't do that. And unfortunately, when you look at the statistics and this is not just in the real estate world, this is all over and inside sales because um, that's what cold lead is inside sales. Okay. So when, when you take a look at that, um, you know, the statistics after, um, after five touches, actually after seven touches, the conversation, the, the lead to conversation rate goes from like 30% to 80. Right. Okay? So, but most people fail at one or two. And that's, that's what happens. Like we reach out to them. We, uh, you know, and you know, we reach out to them once, twice, and then we, we see you later. We see that. Okay. When you just mentioned that the dead lead resurrection, resurrection campaigns that we have, I can't tell you how many times that we'll load a thousand leads in to our, uh, dead lead resurrection, resurrection campaign. And, the responses are, I already bought a house. In other words, I bought a house and it wasn't with you because you neglected to follow up with me. Exactly. Exactly. So, um, so follow up is a contact game and we suck at it. And it's, it, we suck as human beings at it because frankly, we don't like rejection. And so I call, I don't get an answer. I, I call, you know, I email, the email bounces, and then this happens over a period of time. And then our mind says, well, shoot, like these leads suck. And then when we do get somebody on the phone, my, my mind's like, like I'm in a neg I'm in the negative town, right? Because I right. called through 15, I kept getting busy signals and wrong numbers and tech. So it's a contact game, follow-up's a contact game. And now, more than ever, you got to let automation and, and technology do that for you so you don't get frustrated. So that your highest and best use of your time is out seeing, you know, either a client taking an application. There's only three activities for a loan officer you should be doing. You should be out seeing a client, taking an application, possibly out of closing. Some, some LOs like to get, go to closings. You should be taking applications and or having conversations with somebody that you can take an application with now or in the future, or you should be out getting professional referral relationships. Okay. Right. Those are the only activities that, that realtors need. I mean, that loan officers should be doing. Notice there wasn't that there was nothing in the list about pushing paper, finding a home for the <laughs> loan, processing, being the chief cook and bottle washer, wearing all the hats, doing all the loan level minutia. Notice Chris didn't mention any of that stuff. If you're doing all that stuff, you might hit your upper ceiling at 300K, maybe 400K, working like 60, 70, 80 hours a week like a freaking dog. But if you wanna have a life and you wanna to get to half a million to a million plus per year, it ain't gonna happen if you're doing all that minutiae yourself. Let's be real.
Yeah, that, and then the other thing I didn't say is calling elite, calling on elites. Right. I, I, I'm a big – like I don't think that's a good um, – that's not highest and best use of your time. So, <laughs> you know, that, that's the high level. It's a contact game. You can't do it yourself. It's not economical to, to hire a whole team of dialers to do it for you for cold lead, Jen, okay? Um, I think automation and technology can do it for you. And, and I think we, we see it every single day. Mm-hmm. So there's no reason to be spending thousands of dollars on in, you know, human capital when we can let technology do it for us. Um, so so that's, you know, that, that's the big thing is just understanding and, and getting your head around, hey, look, you don't need to make those calls for a week. I get it. You know that you're used to that you're used to doing that because you spend money on the leads, but you just gotta you know you gotta let technology do its thing so that you can stretch out the contact period so that you can let the law of large numbers work in your favor and the law the, the law of large numbers for contacts the amount of outreach work in your favor because you ain't making 10, 10 contacts like let's do the math here right I come in as a lead. I gotta, I gotta be texted, emailed, called. Okay, I don't answer. Each one of those activities takes at least three minutes for the for the sales rep. At least three minutes. I gotta write an email. I gotta text. I gotta do a text. Right. So three minutes. Now I just told you that you need to make at least 10, 10 contacts. Like ten times you're gonna reach out. All three. So say I don't. You know I I don't. Um, I don't respond at all. I've made 10 contacts, 10 times three, right? That's 30 minutes, right? Hey, you're, you're muted. There you go. That's Sorry, buddy. I, uh, I had it muted because uh, my kids are home from school. They're, uh, they're off school for the year, so it's summer mayhem now. And they got this little hoverboard that they're riding on. It's, it's kind of like a seg- it's kind of like a Segway, but without that the you know handle. Yeah, and, and they're doing it right over my head. So I, like, <laughs> vroom, 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 vroom. I can't. So, yeah. So the joys that yeah, because I just texted my wife, be like, can you get them to stop doing that? She sends back. <laughs> she sends back a text. Okay. <laughs> In the meantime, I had it muted. So yeah, um, what was I saying? I was. Um, so it's about to, 30 minutes per con, per lead. Yeah. Oh yeah, and I was saying I was saying and that's if you remember, that's if you're in the mood, that's if you're not sucked into the vortex with operations, putting out fires and doing the urgent and important, which is usually what sucks us in more than anything else, you know, things that, you know, seem really urgent and important. That's what we do now because it seems like, you know, that's just the thing to do to provide great service and to make sure the client and the realtor is happy, but we're constantly yeah. in reactive mode. We're never in proactive mode. Yeah. And so that therein lies the reason why we drop the ball on lead gen and lead conversion and why we leave so much meat on the bone. So automation obviously is mission critical and a lot of people, they don't use it to their advantage nearly enough. I was talking with a client the other day and she was saying how she's generating, she's paying, you know, thousands of dollars a month for Zillow and she's getting her team to call these leads like eight times. She's not using text message. She's not using automation. She's just getting them to literally pick up the phone and smile and dial manually to all these leads every single month. Meanwhile, she's leaving hundreds of thousands of dollars on the table in her database. I told her, I said, sweetheart, you're stepping over dollars to pick up dimes. Yeah. While you're spending all this time that you could automate on follow-up, that you're not doing well, that you're leaving a ton of money on the table there, you could be spending time and energy and focus on your database. But now you're leaving money on the table in your lead conversion because you're not using automation, number one. Number two, because of that, you're spending a ton of time doing lackluster, ineffective follow-up through manual human effort when you could be mining the gold from your database. You're stepping over dollars to pick up dimes. It's ludicrous. It's crazy. But it happens every single day in this business. Yeah. 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 I mean, we, we go back to the pillars, right? And where you should spend your time. So 
But in, in order to have a good cranking business, all those three pillars, like just think of them as, as cylinders in an engine, they all have to be humming, right? Yeah. But at the end of the day, which cylinder really converts the most is where you should spend the most most time. So if I was to look at the, the pillars, you know, one being advertising or direct to consumer, you know, advertising, the other being, um, you know, past clients and referrals, and then the other um, professional referrals, then, you know, we know, like, it's very simple. The cold lead gen or the direct consumer ad campaigns, they convert at 5%. Like, that, it doesn't matter what, like, you could, some people will say, I convert, you know, 8, 9, 10%. Some people will say 2%. At the end of the day, it's 5%. And that's, that's if you're a beast at, that's uh, if you're good. That's if you're a beast at articulating with certainty and competence and overcoming objections and empathy based selling and, uh, you know, getting them on the phone and converting them from the phone to the application yeah. and the automation and technology with follow up and all that. When you thread all the needles on all that, you're maybe doing 5%. Yeah. And then the other pillar, like our, our past clients and referrals from past clients, they're going to convert at 50 50 percent or higher. Yeah. And then professional referrals are going to convert at 30 percent or higher. So where do you like it's it's math. It's this is not like this is not me saying, you know, this is where you should this is where you should spend your time. It's math. I'm going to spend my time. My highest and best use of my time is in the other two pillars. So if I've got a database, a strong database, but I'm not marketing to it, I need to spend time doing that. I need to spend my resources learning how to do that. I need to spend my, you know, uh, bring on some human capital if, if I've got a big organization to do that. If, if, um, if, if you know, my other two pillars, advertising and, and client, um, past clients, my database is tight, but I'm lacking in professional relationships. Well, guess what? You need to get out there and and put your you know put your nose to the grindstone and go out go out and get some more professional relationships. So those are the two pillars that you need. That and that takes time. Like that takes effort. That stuff you can't automate to some right. extent. You know you, you can't automate reach. You can automate reaching out to your client database to some extent, but you can't automate the conversations. No. You know? And those conversations tend to be more of them. Number one because they know you when you do reach out. So more of them, number one, and they're more meaningful because they're always, they're, they're, they're a client. So that's number two. And number three, they last longer than right. the conversation, right? So you need, so that's where the highest and best use of your time. You want to you wanna spend more time on your database. You want to spend more time on professional relationships. The other pillar, direct to consumer, just feeds the client database. That's all it right. does. It feeds a client database. But technology can be used a lot more to do the to do the menial tasks to follow up in in direct to consumer. So you can spend more time in those other two pillars. Yeah, agreed. And all this really comes down to understanding what you, what business you're in, and then really gaining mastery because most people think they're in the mortgage business and that'll keep you broke as a joke. As far as I'm concerned, you might be able to make 200, 300 K believing that. But if you want to make half a million or a million plus per year, you got to understand what business you're in. You're not in the mortgage business. You're in the marketing business. You're in the success cultivate uh, success habit cultivation business. And until and unless you get that and you have your a daily agenda be aligned to that, you're going to forever thwart your progress. You're in the marketing business, guys. Once you get that, then you start to align your calendar with it where you spend the time, the energy, and the money to really pursue mastery in marketing and pursue mastery in mastering the fundamentals of success, success habit cultivation. Because let's be real, you wanna attract top producing realtors, you wanna attract champions, you can't afford to show up like a chump. You know, water seeks its own level. You wanna attract 10 out of 10 in marriage, you can't afford to show up like a five out of 10. It ain't going to happen. They're not going to give you the time of the day. And the same thing happens in, in business, you know? So if you want to attract champions, you got to show up like a champion. And so that's where really owning the true priorities of your business makes a massive, massive difference 
in your ability to ascend to higher levels of affluence, success, freedom, all that. And we've been talking today about how to stop chasing realtors and have them start to chase you. It comes down to this one thing, be chaseable, right? Be the caliber of individual that's worthy of being chased, right? It's like Jim Rohn, he says, you can't chase success. It's like a fleeting butterfly. You got to attract it by the person you become. You don't chase success. You attract it by the person you become. Same thing here, guys. You got to become masterful at marketing. Be masterful at winning the game of life and the game of business. And that's what we teach our clients to do in the loan officer space is learning not just how to generate a bunch of chaff leads on Facebook. Frankly, that doesn't take that much. If you're willing to drop some dough on some programs, you might be able to figure that out on your own. But if you want to win the game at the highest level, it's going to take a whole lot more than that. you got to become a champion at success, at business, at marketing. And then you become irreplaceable and indispensable to these realtors. They send you all their business all the time. They make you their exclusive. And the shortest path to the cash to that, guys, is learning how to lead by example. You learn how to master the game in your own marketing. Then you turn around and show your team how to do likewise. Doesn't that make sense? Because let's be real. Whether you're a loan officer looking to attract top producing agents or whether you're a sales manager who has a team where you're not just wanting to increase your personal production, but you want to increase your team's production. Let's be real. Your underlings and or your referral partners are going to do double what you do wrong and half of what you do right by virtue of your example. So... What you want to do is lead by example. Show them how to win. Show them how to mine the gold from your database. Show them how to attract top producing referral partners who make the exclusive decision to send all their business to you. Show them how to set up the day right and win the day by having a masterful morning routine. That's the kind of stuff we teach our loan officers how to master the game on. Not through complicated steps, convoluted steps, but a simple, elegant approach. So guys, if you want to learn more, we're kind of up on time, but if you want to learn more about how you can uh, you know, really pour gasoline on the fire with your lead gen, with your lead conversion, with your automation and build a business that actually sets you free as opposed to just having a glorified job trading time for money. If you want to learn the secret sauce on how to create that super bait, we call it the killer unique value proposition that attracts top producing agents who are eager to meet with you without making a single cold call. No banging them over the head with a mallet every single freaking Monday with a lame ass value prop. We're talking about getting top producing agents to meet with you like a hot knife through freaking butter. Like we had a, a client uh, recently, he booked 11 appointments with top producing agents in one day, in one day without making a single cold call. That's what I call working smart, not just working hard. And by the way, if you hear the chaos and cacophony in the background, it's summer mayhem, baby. That's how we roll here. In the Aldana household, summer mayhem. School is out, mayhem is in. <laughs> yeah. So, guys, if you want to learn how to, uh, you know, really take that, take your business to the next level, sounds like we're getting some five star reviews in the other room there. So, bring it on, baby. Five star reviews are coming our way. Mommy must be taking a break. <laughs> uh, I invite you guys to book a call with us, a complimentary breakthrough call. We're going to lift up the hood on your business. We're going to look at what's working, what's not working, where you're at, where you want to be. If we can help you create a breakthrough in your business, by all means, we will show you how to do that. If not, frankly, we'll be the first people to say, you know what, you're not the right fit or we're not the right fit for you and uh, you know, direct you on another path. But either way, you're going to leave with massive clarity. Chances are more clarity on what it really takes to create a breakthrough in your business than ever before. And chances are we'll even have some fun along the way. So if you'd like to do that, book a call at mortgagemarketingcoach.com forward slash apply. Again, that's mortgagemarketingcoach.com forward slash apply. Book a call. And uh, remember, nothing ventured, nothing gained. It's not going to cost you a thing to book a call, but chances are it'll cost you a lot, a lot not to, especially if you're in a place where you're just sick and tired of being sick and tired of being in the same old place, spinning your wheels in stagnation. There is a better way, my friend. Get on that call with us. We'll show you how to take it to that next level. All right, guys, mortgagemarketingcoach.com forward slash apply. I'm going to put it up on the screen so you guys can see it. Probably should have done that the first time, but all that chaos and cacophony distracted me. So you're welcome. Uh, Chris, thanks for hanging with me, brother. What's uh, one last little kind of golden nugget you'd like to have 
our peeps marinate their minds on before we uh, sign off today? Yeah, I mean, I, I think it, the biggest thing is to shift your mindset that you're not a commodity and you're a needed resource. And, and if you don't feel as though that you are a needed resource, then you're probably not, meaning that you need to sharpen your sword. You know, you need you need to you need to revisit what your value proposition is. And please, for the love of everything that's good in this world, in this industry, it's not great rates, great service, you know, uh, close on time, et cetera. You, you got to have a good, unique value proposition. What we suggest, because it's not just us that are telling us this, it's the market that um, that your value proposition is you help them meeting your realtor partners grow their business. Agreed. Amen. Amen. Amen, brother. Well, thanks for hanging with me today, Chris. It's been fun. And, and uh, guys, thanks for watching or listening. However, you're consuming this content. This is Doran Aldana, MortgageMarketingCoach.com, coming at you with the real deal, Chris Real. And this is the Art of Mortgage Marketing podcast. So thanks for tuning in and uh, come back for another kick-ass episode. We hit you up every week with fresh, real, raw, what's working now tactics that work when you work them. So keep tuning in, guys. Keep being awesome. Go forth, take massive action, bring massive positive energy to that action. Chances are you'll get massive results, especially if you roll with us, because we know exactly what it takes to get massive results, guys. So go forth and let's make this happen. Make it a beautiful day and uh, we'll talk to you soon. Peace. Take care.